Most Naruto fans would be quick to think of Hidon when they hear someone mention the way of Joshin, and it makes a lot of sense. Hidon used to scream out the name of Joshin every chance he got. However, if you think you know everything there is to know about the way of Joshin, then I implore you to grab your ramen bowl because I feel confident in saying that there's more to the way of Joshin than you ever expected, and I guarantee that you'll learn something by watching this video. So let's get the most obvious thing out of the way. Way. There's more to senseless slaughter when it comes to the way of Joshin, and I'm about to explain to you why. In a very sick and twisted way, the way of Joshin is actually pretty complex. There are layers to what fans are quick to call a cult that exist in the Naruto franchise. The biggest sign that there was more to the way of Joshin was shown to us in the Akatsuki novel, Evil Flowers in Full Bloom, which looks at the various Akatsuki members on a more intimate level, taking you into their psyche and into some of their more trying moments as members of the Akatsuki and moments that questioned their humanity. In the chapter that focused on Hidon and Kakuzu, the layers are peeled back into just what the way of Joshin is. In Hidon's dialogue, he openly says that the way of Joshin was a public service announcement and that Joshin's true goal to his followers, their purpose, was to save people from the fear of death. You might ask why? Well, humans by nature have always been fascinated by death, no matter how far back you go. It's in our literature. We ask ourselves the following questions. Does it hurt to die? What is there after death? Is it scary to die? What is the meaning of death? Even when you look closer at our literature on quite a few occasions, authors tend to build up heroes just to have them die in the name of the greater good. It's part of why so many people are fascinated by tragic stories. When it comes to Joshin, its whole purpose was being meant to save anyone who feared death, though it's a bit odd that Joshin would call for its followers to take the lives of those who are scared of death. Using that logic, Anyone nearby a follower of Joshin is at the risk of dying. That's what brings us to the next point. Just how are the targets of the way of Joshin selected in the Naruto universe? Joshin calls for selecting a neighbor as being a neighbor of the follower, but not in the way that you and I might think to use the word neighbor, meaning someone who lives next door to us. That doesn't apply in this case. Instead, Joshin calls for a neighbor as being someone that has a link formed with the follower and the person. It's why Hidon said that Kakuzu could never be considered his neighbor since they are always near each other, but yet there's not a full connection formed between the two. You might ask about Asma Sarutobi, which is where there's a gray area when it comes to the way of Joshin. Asuma was someone whose hatred and disgust towards Hidon and the Akatsuki was arguably enough to make him a prime target to be selected, though the cursed blood jutsu merely requires the blood of the person to be ingested. This brings us to the next point. Joshin's goal is creating a world where mass slaughter is accepted, which was revealed in Naruto Data Book 3 as being the real reason why Hidon joined the Akatsuki. I know the anime added some scenes that contradict this, but I'm more likely to take the information given by the series creator than what we got by Studio Period, who have on multiple occasions been shown changing material from the source material to fit what they're doing for the filler arcs. Now, the other thing you have to look at is that the way of Joshin calls for the follower to honor Joshin after taking the life of a target by meditating, reflecting on the moments that just happened that they shared with their target. It's also why Kishimoto wrote in Naruto Data Book 3 that he initially planned to design Hidon as being a deaf god before settling on the design that we all know, which would explain the bones and the black skin as being the epitome of fear that Kishimoto was going for. After the events of Naruto chapter 700 and the Konoha Shinden novel, which follows Kakashi and Mirai on a mission, Kakashi is ordered by Hokage Naruto to investigate reports that a Jashin cult was rumored to exist, but the mission was also meant as a way for Naruto to test Mirai's resolve by having her come face to face with the cult that took the life of her father, Asuma. The leader had been rounding up young girls 
girls, which was implied to be his attempt to recreate the immortality ceremony that Hedon used for his powers. And it makes a lot of sense when you dive into the ancient civilizations and some of the myths that Kishimoto used to form the Naruto universe. Virgin blood was seen as valuable in some myths and civilizations. In fact, when you look at the real world, there once existed an Indian cult that used death rituals in the same way that Jashin was used in the Naruto universe, only in this case, they worshiped a goddess. And at its peak, this cult was responsible for the death of over 2 million people, which would explain where Kishimoto got his ins inspiration from. Depending on the translation that you get, Jashin means wicked heart, and it makes a lot of sense given the heinous acts of his followers. That being said, Hedon, interestingly enough, does pray before every fight, and in Data Book 3, it was revealed that he always prayed to be successful in taking the life of a target and delivering them from the fear of death. Oddly enough, after taking the life of a target, Hedon would then go on to pray for forgiveness for taking the life, and he also contradicts himself by praying to Jashin for thanks for allowing him to be the person who showed the target that death was not something to be feared, but instead death was an embracement of a journey to the next stage. This is why Hedon became so overly animated when he was slowly finishing off Asuma, seeing someone undergo the pain that he was inflicted and seeing the fear build in Asuma's eyes. It only added to the fuel to the fire that Hedon possessed, making him think that he was truly doing the right thing. And I'll leave this for you guys on one final note. In the Boruto era, the mission that Kakashi and Mirai took actually happened during Boruto's time in the Academy since it takes place after Naruto chapter 700 where we see Boruto and Sarada in their early years at the Academy. So what did you guys find interesting about the way of Jashin? Did you learn something new? And would you personally like to see one of the followers from the way of Jashin show up in the Boruto era? Alright now before we get out of here I have to do the post notification shout out and this week I absolutely have to go with Karama and the reason being is that I almost always see this guy commenting on every video and you were one of the first subscribers to this channel so I thank you for your support and the fact that I almost always see you in one of the first comments when I pull it up lets me know that you're subscribed and you have that notification bell turned on so once again from the bottom of my heart I thank you for your continued support now moving on to the comment of the week which you should see popping up on the screen right now but as always thank you so much for watching until the end of the video don't forget to comment rate subscribe share thank you so much guys have an incredible day